What's going on? Live and direct on the air. Live and direct on the air. Y'all already know the brand. Freedom is a must. Freedom is definitely a must. Hoping everybody's well, everybody's safe, everybody's healthy. What's going on, fam? Today I want to talk about Bobby Shmurda, Roddy Rebel. A lot of people throughout the world, they know about these brothers. They don't know them personally. They know them through YouTube, through videos, through songs, through whatever. I know them both personally. So I was with Bobby Shmurda and Rowdy Rebel for like a year. I got to see a lot of things out of them. Not only seeing them as artists that, you know, making music out there that people love and stuff like that, but I got to see for who they really are in person, live, for a whole year. How did I get to, to meet them? When I was going back and forth to court, for some reason, when I came back from, uh, from up top, I was CMC. And I came down and I went to C95, like I told you on my prior video. And I was there when I met Higgins and the brothers down there. But when they packed us up, they packed dudes that went certain buildings in the island. And I got packed up and I went to Manhattan House. When I went to Manhattan House, they put me in the same house with Bobby Schmurter and Rowdy Rebel. They could confirm this. They were there on the strength that they were artists and people was trying to get at them and stuff like that. Not that they were scared. And I'm gonna I'm explain why I say that. Cause they not no scary cat dudes. But uh, I landed in the house where they were both at amongst other people that were high profile. The reason after later on I found out that I was there, I was put there, was because it was sent from Albany that I had some media and stuff like that going on. And uh, I was CMC from up there. So they didn't want to take no chance that I was a state inmate on top of media and something happened to me or whatever. And they put me CMC, Captain Escort down there. Bobby Schmurder, you could confirm this, that I was CMC, Captain Escort everywhere I went, clinic or elsewhere that I went throughout the building. I was Captain Escort, they had to call the captain to escort, escort me. Bullshit, but you know, it is what it is. In the years time that I was there with Bobby, I was next door to Rowdy Rebel because Manhattan House is a two-tier uh, block. In other words, you know, there's, let's say, 30 cells in the bottom, let's just say that much, and 30 cells on the top tier, but we still eat together, we still watch TV together. So Bobby was in the top tier in the corner. He had the corner cell. But when they cracked the cell, we all come out together. We together. Same uh, same unit. So what type of people was that? It was, you know, while they was young and I was I was older, it was cool cats, man. You know, and I'm not even going to call them cats. You know you know what I mean, the street, street talk, meaning they were real niggas. And, and I seen in the time that I was there, Bobby was a funny dude. He was a funny dude, always joking. But you came at him at, at a certain way. His reaction was quick. He wasn't playing. He ain't no sucker. And as soon as you get him going, Roddy Rebel run run to the situation immediately. Cause that's his boy. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I did the same thing for my boys too. But Roddy Rebel was there in a minute. He heard something, they go arguing with Rod with, with uh, Bobby and all that. He run up to the situation immediately. But the time that I was there, what type of dude? was Bobby and, and Rowdy. First of all, Bobby used to always make sure that Rowdy was good. Rowdy used to always make sure that Bobby was good. I remember that in that time when he caught that case, he, he, he wasn't up north yet. He was still fighting that case that he came in. And I remember that it was it was one of these, these women rappers, one of these girl rappers was going to bail him out because I know he was on the phone all the time. She was going to bail him out, had the money and all that. And one of these male famous rappers God, what was was hating and told the girl, yo, don't bail that dude out, Bobby, because look at the situation he's in. It's gonna give you a bad name with your reputation in the artist business, and don't get that nigga out. So whoever I forgot what was that artist put on the other artist that chick, and she ended up not bailing, bailing Bobby out. 
some sucker shit. But in the time Bobby was there, funny dude, always joking, he made sure that every week, those that didn't have money in their commissary, because they didn't have it like that. Excuse me, had money in their commissary. When they go to the store, they come back, half of that commissary come to him, half of that commissary still with the dudes that went to the store, because they looked out for him. The thing is that on top of Bobby Schmurder and them, giving them money for them to keep half and give him half, he used to get two or three tables, put them together, make these uh these meals that we used to make with the tuna, with the red and soup, with the with 190 hot water and all that shit, cut up with the beef sticks and shit like that, put them up in there with the potato chips, the nacho chips, crush them up, put them in there, became a, you know, sandwich type of shit. So he used to do this on, a, on two or three tables every day. But there was lunch, dinner, and everybody ate all of them things, man. I mean, I mean everybody, whoever was there was ate. He didn't discriminate. He ain't, you know, dislike niggas for whatever that was in there. You know, he considered that, that that was their business. The truth is that Bobby didn't give a fuck what dudes was in there. Probably didn't even know why half of the dudes was in there anyway. But he knew other dudes there was high profile also just like them. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he knew my situation because, you know, I was CMC. I was Captain Escort. And he knew where I was, you know what I'm saying? He knew I wasn't in there on no PC shit or nothing like that. Crazy thing is that when I was coming from C95 on the a, on a move out towards Manhattan House, we had picked up Bobby in the courthouse. And he came in and, you know, because who he is, they put him on that single cage shit in, in a bus. And uh, he was talking to people up in there, knew who he was, you know, shot him out. And I was telling him, yeah, I was, I'm going to Manhattan House. And they talking about I'm CMC or whatever. And I don't know where, really where I'm going. I ain't never been to the tombs. And he said, most likely you're going to my house. Either you going to my house or you going to another house up in there that they got up in the building. But most likely you going to my house because they got mad room up in there. So when we got up inside and in the intake showing up, Bobby went up. Three hours later, I ended up up there with Bobby. And uh, from that point on, we was cool. We didn't have no issues. We was cool. We broke bread and shit. I got to see, you know, who he, who he was for that entire year that I was down there fighting the case. And uh, good dudes, man. Good dudes. I, you know, I, I did, you know, see a lot of shit that happened when dudes came in from other gangs, came in there trying to start shit or trying to take phone time or run the house and all that. And, uh, of course, Bobby got up, you know, with his brother Rowdy, and, you know, they, they got on alert mode, fucked a lot of dudes up. I remember they all took this dude's eye out, almost. I'm talking about nigga had a red eye, beyond red eye. They all knocked this nigga eye out, because he came up there talking mad nonsense. And like I said, when you talk to Bobby on some bullshit, get ready, because uh, Rowdy ain't staying without a punch. Went down there after... After Bobby and fucked the dude up, Rowdy came up in there too and fucked the nigga up again. And you know, you know how I go, man. You know what I'm saying? People look out for people. It wasn't on no jumping shit. These niggas never jump niggas. You know, one got it off. And after the dude kept talking shit, the next nigga came in and got it off. But these are real dudes. You know what I'm saying? They broke bread with the peoples. You know, sharing was caring. They shared with them dudes that really ain't have nothing. Ain't have shit. You know what I mean? Uh... Yeah, that was doing anything. That was getting their little, little weed shit and all that shit up in. On top of getting their weed up there to however they got it, you know, because our visits is different. We used to go to the council visits. We ain't go to no regular visit. We went to council visits where it was a room by yourself, you know, small enough for you and your visit. So down there, a lot of dudes were getting a fuck on. They was getting their drugs on because the police was all the way in the front. They ain't give a fuck. They was all the way in the front over there. Like I said, there was lawyers down there too in some of the rooms. And, you know, they barely walked back and forth to watch what we was doing and shit when we was down there in the visits. But on top of that, he come up with the trees and have other niggas go down there and pick up trees. And when they come up, guess what? Everybody smoked out of that. He threw that shit up in, in, in the table in the back, rolled that up. Everybody rolled. He gave. He blessed people. You know what I'm saying? And 
we was all living up there, man. You know, whether you had or not, when it came to Bobby, you had. When it came to Bob, you know, Roddy Rebel, you had because, they, you know, they shared love, man. It was all about love. They got along with dudes unless you came at them, you know, in a wrong way and shit. But Bobby, if you see this video, get up on here and confirm, man. You know what I'm saying? And even though I don't give a fuck what niggas talk about, that I was up there, if I was this, I was that, because, you know, dudes tend to come up here on his YouTube and start talking nonsense about niggas who's in PC, niggas that. I really don't give a fuck what a motherfucker say. You know what I'm saying? But I was, you know, I was CMC, Captain Escort, Bobby, Schmurder, Roddy Rebel, verify that. Because them niggas got to see my card all the time. And when I came back and forth to court, how they brought me up. Or when they took me to the clinic, how they got a call for the Captain Escort. I wasn't on no IPC, no PC, none of that stuff. Just that Albany sent some shit down to the island. And sometimes that shit don't even, you know, don't even work like that where they do that. But they did it to me. They did it to a lot of dudes from me hearing in the, in the past. And it was done. So what? But, uh, you know, they can confirm with this right here, man. I talk real, tip, real talk, real shit. I don't get up in here and talk nonsense and talk make-believe stories or make-up shit or come up with some shit. I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? For every story I got, I got somebody that I can get up on here. I could interview live and they can verify and they can speak about it and they can say that it's real shit, man. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no future in front, man. So, you know, you up here making stories, making up stories and saying bullshit, trying to get views, trying to get likes, trying to get this for these bullshit stories and you getting them, you know what I'm saying? Get them, but, uh, you know, ain't no future in front, man. Always talk real shit, real talk. Again, make sure y'all subscribe to these real pages, these real organizations, helping prison reform, helping the wrongfully, you know, convicted, helping brothers with parole, with clothes, to come home, to get housing. You know, check out success at the lockdown, EB, uh, Anthony Cologne. Make sure y'all go and check out Anthony Cologne doing uh, big things also in Florida, in New York, for Real Talk Podcast. Check out these other organizations, you know, Glenn Martin. There's a lot of organizations out there that's doing for the peoples, man. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you subscribe to the page, live and direct, on the air, on YouTube. Thank you for my 1,000 subscribers. My numbers are going up. Appreciate my subscribers, my followers. Much love, much respect. Share the pages. Again, follow Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all the same name. Live and direct on the air. Live and direct on the air. Nothing but peace and love. And y'all already know the brand, man. Freedom is a must. Y'all heard? Peace.